you do what you're told when you're a child to the point that if you thought of something as a child that you wanted to do and you went and did it <clears throat> you a lot of children most children I would say would get clobbered for that for, and really what, what you're doing is you're hurting your child for thinking for themselves but you always when you when you have a child you always have to think what can I do for this child to make them a prosperous and happy adult and one thing you can do is let them do what they want go through it in your mind and think what what would what would be the harm of letting them do something the way they want to do it um, a lot of times with my kids I would tell them what I wanted and how to do it and at one point one of them probably about age seven which is the age of reason said mommy why do you always tell us how to do it I can figure that out and I guess it was my youngest and she, she might have been younger and um, she said just, just tell me what you want me to do and let me figure out how to do it so I would I would and and uh, you know if it took her two hours then it took her two hours if there was a way for her to do it in five minutes I would let her take the two hours to do it and then I would say you know um, that was really good that you figured that out um, another way to do that would would be you know and then I would tell her and she would be oh good but you thanks for letting me do it the way I want and it's so simple I mean it's so simple to do that it's just that your first your knee-jerk reaction is to tell them how to do it because it's, it's a judgment thing you think that if somebody does things the way you do it they're a better person uh, I had a neighbor here who questioned every time I would do something different I do things very differently than people because I always had to figure out what to do I'd be on a movie set or on a play uh, or something and I had I had to be responsible for myself I had to figure out what to do how to get from here to there uh, who to ask what to ask um, you know what my options were everything so I always had to figure things out for myself and I think that now when I figure things out and people say well how did you know how to do that well I I didn't I figured it out that is the thing that I need everybody to ignore your parents when they taught you how to do something allow your children to do it their way um, as long as they're not I mean, if it's a plan that is going to hurt them or someone else then you have to step in but if it's just something that they want to do differently than you, you you really have the responsibility to say good good for you go ahead go ahead good good thinking you figured it out that's good I didn't have the, see people didn't people didn't ever realize how young I was so I didn't have a positive feedback for it but I just um, had no parental supervision whatsoever and so I had to be independent at a very young age and I think that that is why I do things so differently and um, 
I feel that it's your parents who taught you how to do things that really holds you back because you don't you can't think for yourself and that's the that is the problem we face if we want to ever get to world peace now in my Italian extended family uh, one time oh yeah my grandmother when she was molesting me said she was taking my temperature and I thought she is not taking my temperature so um, one time we were at a family gathering you know and Terry and uh, Norma brought food and my grandmother cooked up a storm and there was way too much food and um, sometimes they would jabber in uh, Italian so I picked up a lot of Italian I was not allowed to speak Italian I, I in, in retrospect I think it was because what they would talk about sexual abuse and things like that and the kids wouldn't be able to know what it was so, um, at any rate, my little cousin, not little, she was just a year or two younger than me, and I was probably 13, so she would have been about 11, so, or 12 and 10, maybe. She said, I like it when Grandma takes my temperature. Don't you like it when Grandma takes your temperature? So she evidently would sleep over quite a bit. And her mother, Norma, knew that her mother, my grandmother, was a child molester and still let my cousin go and spend the night there. So I said, don't let her do that. That's wrong. She shouldn't be doing that to you. And my cousin said, oh, it's not wrong. She does it all the time. And I said, no, no. That's something that a man and a wife do together. And it, it, it's how they make babies. It's sex. And you shouldn't be having sex with your grandmother. And she said, oh, no, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's fine. And I said, you know what, if it's fine, why don't you go ask her to take your temperature now? It doesn't take very long, does it? She said, no. So I said, well, go ask her. If you think it's fine, go ask her now and see what happens. So sure enough, she walked across the room and said, Grandma, take my temperature. It won't take very long. You can come back and talk after. And uh, Grandma just giggled and said, oh, no, no, no. And I, lo I looked at her, and, and she, so she said it again. Grandma, take my temperature. And uh, it, won't, it won't take very long. You can come back and talk. And Norma said, what are you pestering Grandma about? And she said, I want Grandma to take my temperature. And Norma was like, you what? You're not sick. And she, then she realized, because she was probably, t she would probably tell them that she wanted to take their temperature. Um, and the, the fireworks started. And uh, my grandfather said he was going to kill me. And that Santa should have killed me when I was born because I'm a girl. And, uh, and so my mother took me and my sisters away. We went back home. I guess my father came with us. And then Norma called my house and told my father that his father was on his way to kill me. So, uh, 
my my father I found that's when I found out that my mother she she confessed to my father that she had been trying to kill me all along and it was never successful and maybe they should let they should let grandpa kill me and then my father said I know she's just a girl but you know, I don't think I'd be doing as well at work if it weren't for her ideas. She's the one who has come up with the last 10 ad campaigns. And uh, I need to keep her to, uh, otherwise I think I would lose my job. And, uh, and he said, and it's wrong anyway, she's not a baby anymore. You know, in a couple of years she'll be off to college and you'll be rid of her. So this is a wonderful thing to hear your parents talking so freely about killing you. You know, that's how much they hated me. It was just, you know, I had heard, I had, you know, my whole life, but that was really kind of, um, really upsetting. So I decided I would go and sit. We had. We had a back stairway in, in my house, and I don't think my grandparents had been to that house, you know, more than two or three times. We always went to my grandparents' house. So I figured out if I sat on the back stairway, I don't think he knew that that existed. If I heard him coming into the kitchen, I could run out the back door. If I heard him, you know, like I, it, it was an easy escape route any which way you slice it. So uh, he never did kill me. And then I talked to my aunt. Uh, she called up to see if I was okay. And I said, you know, Norma, Aunt Norma, um, what, she, what your daughter is talking about is sex. What she likes about that is, is sex. You know, let's just call it what it is. And Norma said, no, no, it's not. And I said, yes, it is. I said, and you, you told her, and she told me this, you told her that she can't do that with boys. So she's been asking Grandma to do it for her, and she's been asking her friends to do it for her. And maybe, you know, she's, she's sexually mature enough to want to have sex with boys. Maybe you should you know, get her on the pill and allow her to have sex with boys and explain to her, you know, right from wrong and explain to her um, uh, that you that you don't have, you know, that that it is sex and that you don't have sex with your grandmother. That That's a no-no, you know. So, and at first she was very taken aback that I would even use the word sex and uh, and that she was the one who was kind of fueling the fire by not allowing her daughter by telling her daughter she couldn't have sex with a boy when that is what she would prefer to do was to have sex with a boy then rather than her grandmother so I think Norma did what I said and she took her to Planned Parenthood and got her some birth control and told her, talked to her about sex and you know, I, I believe you should have a relationship with somebody if you're going to have sex. Uh, it ne It's never worked out. I, I've only maybe twice had sex with somebody who I wasn't in a relationship with. So, uh, so she did and it like turned turned a huge corner for the, their whole family because she was thinking more about you know how to shape this little person into a happy healthy adult and what she had been doing was she she probably would have created a child molester like my cousin would have grown up and she would have molested children if she thought it was bad to do that with a boy, then what do you do? You have to have sex somehow. I mean, we are built to enjoy heterosexual sex. That's how we are built. It's in our DNA. In fact, 
when people, the, the National Geographic, um, that world, the series about the world and the wild animals. Well, hold on. And they said, um, I talked to the guys who filmed that, and they said that the chimpanzees, all they do is eat, sleep, and have sex. And I'm like, that sounds wonderful. But I think, I re really believe that if we didn't have sexual mores, that we would do the same thing. Um, because sex, I think, is the way that, um, that we know how we're going to feel in heaven. Um, it feels really great in heaven. And it feels really great to have heterosexual sex. And that's why you know, then the mores of society say, you know, you should be married. Uh, which is too bad because marriage... I came up with this thing called, a, uh, I call, um, a re-up prenup. Because you have a prenup that is a regular pre prenup, but in order to stay married, you have to re-up it. You have to both sign it and witness it in order to stay married. And you can put in any time frame you want. I suggest seven years. That you're married for seven years, and if you don't sign that sign up for another seven years or another year then your marriage dissolves and your prenup takes over and and you know you get the house and you get the furniture and you get the dog and you get the kids and all that is um, already set up in your prenup and uh, and the and so you wouldn't even need to get a divorce and that's my solution to it because people do want some kind of validation for their relationship. I also would recommend, um, uh, you know, what the what the uh, the black people used to do when they were slaves is they were not legally allowed to get married, so they would jump a broom together, which was like their marriage. Now. Why the why the government feels they need to get involved in marriage is just another way of controlling people, and that you know you can say no 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 about that, but you know if you think about it, why is there why? I said to this homosexual couple uh, when when they were talking about. Um, making marriage legal, homosexual marriage legal, I said, I didn't think homo sapiens should get married. And they didn't get the joke. They thought I meant homosexuals. I just said it wrong or something. And they were furious. But really, I don't. I don't think that the government has any right to say that this is a marriage and it's going to last forever. Um, there's too many variables in our lives and people change people also can act one way before they're married and as soon as they're married they act another way and that is a scary scary thing that happened to me twice um, so that is that that is that was when I had my cousin do that and got them all yelling at each other uh, about the way they were brought up and that they were sexually molested and um, that stopped the abuse in that family and the family it was very appreciative of me for doing that you have to stop the abuse cycle so that let's say 10 generations ago your forefathers belonged 
to a satanic cult and the satanic cult taught them to kill their if if their firstborn is a girl to kill it and to keep having babies until you have a boy and um, my uh, my brother went to see our 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 relatives who are still in northern Italy and he said the whole yard they have a big they have a big a big spread because they grew silkworms and so they have all these trees that um, the silkworms live in and they they collect the silk and that's how they make their living so they have a silkworm farm basically a tree farm and uh, all around the property were little tiny graves and grave markers and my brother said you know they just stayed the one night and then they left and he would never go back there and and um, my our our Italian relatives were really mad when they saw him walking around because basically the whole place the whole farm was a graveyard for for the little dead baby girls so somewhere along the line somebody was in a satanic cult who taught that and and they they viciously teach that girls are worthless this particular cult that owned me felt that the savior, the person who was coming to save the world, would be a woman. The, and the woman who told me all that is a woman, and yet she believes that women are inferior and that uh, rape is the only way to have sex with a woman she said she had never had sex she had two kids but she subjected herself to a rape ritual in order to get pregnant now her husband must not have sex with anybody else and he's not allowed to have sex with her so all this allowed to stuff is uh that's all satanic. You're not allowed to have sex. Then you know that your church, if your church preaches that, that your church has roots in the satanic church. So what I'm saying is even though these people in northern Italy had been say, satanists and they gave that practice up, the abusive side, the abuse, the child abuse, and murdering babies, and murdering little girls, and having sex with your son, and having sex then with your grandson, um, and killing those baby girls, uh, is satanic. And even if you don't go to church, the satanic church, that same teaching will stay with you uh, until somebody breaks that chain of abuse and that's what that is what I am trying to do with my life here is to point out what is abuse and how to stop it so if you see yourself and you probably do somehow in this scenario um, and you're a man and your mother had abused you mentally and emotionally and physically and you never got married to a woman because your mother told you that women are all terrible these terrible creatures um, then think twice about it you know you have to think on your own two feet you can't do what you are allowed to do you're allowed to do whatever you want you're your own person and even as a child you should have been allowed to do whatever you wanted as long as you weren't hurting anybody but see these people who are teaching you what you're allowed to do are murderers killing a baby is a, is murder which brings up 
abortion, very briefly, um, going to full term and then murdering a baby, I think, is far more disgusting than having an abortion. Now, my mother told me plenty of times she would have had an abortion with me if it was legal, but she could have found somebody to do the abortion. And that's what we have to do, is we have to keep abortion legal, because if you make abortion illegal, all that will stop is safe abortions. The only thing that will stop is a safe, legal abortion. It will not stop abortions. You got it? Only 20 to 25 percent of the country feels that uh, abortion should be illegal. It is not a popular opinion. And for men in, the, in politics to think that they have the right to tell women what they can do with their bodies is just ludicrous and vicious and selfish and, and evil. So I just hope that people stand up for your rights. Men should stand up as well for women's rights. You're the ones who get us pregnant. So you should also, uh, and men are the ones a lot of times, 90% of the time, it's a man who suggests that you have an abortion. So men really have a huge stake in this as well to stand up and say you have to keep abortion legal because if I have a girlfriend and she gets pregnant and I don't want her to have the baby, I'd, I don't want her to die. I don't want her to get an infection and she can't have any more children. And that is the thing that will happen. If abortions become illegal, women will die and women will get infections that will keep them from having any other babies. It's, 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 like I said, it's vicious and evil to say that we have to have our babies. Who's going to take care of them? Almost 100% of pregnancies for girls under 15 is by their fathers. It's like 95%. They're, it's their fathers who impregnated them. And the, the father is going to want his daughter to have an abortion. He's not going to want people to know that that's what happened. So you, have, you all have to fight to keep abortion legal. Or it's, it's just barbaric to think you can change that law just because you want to.